This video is sponsored by The Rich Wallet. Experiment time! Today we'll find the best way to prepare your bacon. Spoiler, it's not the microwave. Hi, I'm Soon, and I'm a food geek. Bacon's delightful flavor profile results from a fascinating interplay of complex chemical reactions during its curing and cooking process. Bacon starts with pork belly, which is packed with fat. Fat itself is flavorful, but it also absorbs flavors very well, making it the ideal base for the curing process. During curing, the pork belly is seasoned with salt, sugar, and often nitrates. The salt helps preserve the meat and enhances its taste, while the sugar balances the saltiness and promotes development of a sweet, caramelized flavor during cooking. Adding nitrates play a critical role in contributing to bacon's distinct flavor. These compounds react with the meat's proteins and give bacon its unique pinkish-red color and the characteristic taste that sets it apart from other forms of cooked pork. Additionally, nitrates inhibit the growth of harmful bacteria, ensuring the meat is safe to consume. When bacon is cooked, a series of chemical reactions known as the Maillard reaction takes place. This reaction, which occurs when proteins and sugars are heated, is responsible for the delightful browning of the bacon and the complex savory notes associated with well-cooked meats. The Maillard reaction gives bacon its depth of flavor, providing the mouth moderating mix of umami, sweetness, and the smokiness that bacon lovers crave. The high fat content in the bacon also contributes significantly to its taste. As bacon cooks, the fat begins to render, releasing aromatic compounds that mingle with the flavors developed during the Maillard reaction. Further, the fat has a creamy mouthfeel that's generally pleasing to the palate. It also helps carry flavors to the taste buds, allowing us to perceive the complex notes in bacon more fully. Finally, the texture of bacon adds to its overall appeal. The contrast between the crispy, caramelized edges and the tender, Fatty portions provide a satisfying crunch and a melt-in-your-mouth experience, making every bite exciting. The smoky aroma that wafts from the frying pan evokes comfort and familiarity, further enhancing the culinary experience. In sum, bacon's irresistible taste results from a harmonious fusion of chemistry, craftsmanship, and sensory delight. The quality of the meat, the curing process, and the wood used for smoking are, of course, all important factors in the taste experience. Buy the best bacon you can afford, it makes a difference. I will, in this video, focus on the preparation part, although the other factors are also important. Did you know that your next wallet can turn into a Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor? I've never been a fan of wallets. They're bulky and insecure. You just end up filling them with all sorts of useless junk. That's why I love my Rich Wallet. They fit up to 12 cards and are made of RFID blocking materials, so nobody can scan your card unless you want them to. Without spending a dollar, you can enter on their website for a chance to win the brand new upgraded Hennessy Ford Bronco, or $75,000 if you prefer cash. You get one bonus entry for every $1 you spend on the site, and custom Hennessy products come with up to 1,000 entries. Using my link rich.com foodgeek and the coupon code foodgeek, you will get a 10% discount and 10 bonus entries for the sweepstakes. That's rich.com foodgeek and the coupon code foodgeek. If you're considering getting a rich wallet, now is the best time. My perfect bacon is crispy and wonderfully brown, but still with some chewy bits. When it turns brittle, it's definitely overdone in my opinion. If you like your bacon finished differently, you may come to a different conclusion on what method is best, but you will still be able to see what each method does to this delicious meat. What I will be testing are these different types of preparation. Microwave, cast iron skillet, nonstick skillet, water in skillet, oven baking on a rack, and oven baking on parchment paper. I also wanted to try it in an air fryer, but at the time of the recording, I didn't own one. I will test both thin-cut and thick-cut bacon, which could make a big difference. Also, 
I'll have twice as much bacon to eat after the experiment has been concluded. Those were the words. This is the experiment. There's a link in the description to the recipes on my website. First, I'll go through all the methods using regular sliced bacon, then with thick sliced bacon. The first method I will try out is the microwave. I put a piece of kitchen paper on the plate, add the bacon slices, and then a piece of paper on top. I put it in my 900 watt microwave with a timer for four minutes. When there's about a minute left, I check to see how it's doing. I take it out at four minutes where it looks done. Overall time, 4 minutes and 30 seconds. The cleaning required is minimal. Now skill it with water. This method seems to have been pioneered by America's Test Kitchen. That's where I saw it the first time, and it looks like they get great results. The idea is that the water will keep the temperature down until the fat has rendered. <laughs> well, let's see how it fares. I add the bacon slices to the pan. Cover with water. Turn the heat up to high. When the water has evaporated, I turn the heat down to medium low. Overall time, 15 minutes and 30 seconds. That pan will certainly take some scrubbing to clean. We're gonna try a rack in the oven with some paper towels underneath. The oven is heated to 200 degrees Celsius, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I add the slices of bacon. Put it in the oven. I put the timer to 20 minutes and then I'll check. After 24 minutes in the oven, I took them out. Overall time, 29 minutes. The cleaning is minimal. The next method is using a nonstick skillet. I put the bacon in the cold skillet and set the burner to medium. It took about 12 minutes and 30 seconds to finish them. I had to remove them to avoid them getting burned in spots. Overall time, 13 minutes. Cleaning will be super easy here. All right, onto the oven baked on parchment paper. I add the slices of bacon to the parchment paper. And then I put it in the oven, same temperature as before. It was a lot faster than the rack method, about 18 minutes. Overall time, 23 minutes. Cleaning is super easy, just throw out the parchment paper. Lastly, let's get the good old cast iron skillet out. Put the bacon in the pan and turn it on to medium high. It took about six and a half minutes to get good results. Looks the best so far. Overall time, seven minutes. Cleaning wise, it requires a bit more scrubbing, but nothing more than usual for a cast iron. All right, let's move on to the thick cut bacon. The microwave overall time, five minutes. Water and skillet overall time, 16 minutes. Oven baked on rack overall time, 33 minutes. Nonstick skillet overall time, 13 minutes. Oven baked on parchment paper overall time, 28 minutes. Cast iron skillet, overall time, seven minutes. All right, now comes the most important test. How is the texture? First, let's try the regular cut. Hmm, 
It's just too brittle. Hmm. This one just isn't crispy enough. The rack baked one is very crispy, but kind of dry. This one is too chewy. <laughs> this one is great. It, it could have a bit more crispiness for me. This one is perfect. Just the right balance between crispy and chewy. All right, let me try the thick cut bacon. Hmm, this one is both too chewy and too crispy at the same time. This one is too chewy. I want more crisp. This one is also too chewy. And this one is too chewy as well. Mmm, this one is perfect. And this one's perfect too. All right, let me sum this up. It seems like the methods that either soak up the fat or lead the fat away or just don't render enough fat out of the bacon fall short of the delicious crispiness that's so important for perfectly cooked bacon. For me, it's a close toss up between the cast iron and the oven baked on parchment paper methods. If I'm cooking a couple of slices, I would go for the cast iron skillet because it's much faster. The oven method is slower, but much less messy to clean up, and it's easy to make many slices without much more effort. Mmm, bacon. <laughs> so the conclusion is clear. While a cast iron skillet may be the best, the difference to oven baked bacon on parchment paper is so little, and you can make so much more bacon in a lot less time, plus less cleaning. I know how I'm making my bacon going forward. So start your comment with mm, bacon, and let me know what method you're gonna use. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.